And this is why all of my garden is basically dead. Stupid ants and stupid aphids. Hey everyone, welcome to, hi Soji, that's my cat. Welcome to the Halfway Homestead. Today we're going to be harvesting sunflowers because that's the only thing I can harvest right now. I had a lot of crops and they all failed, mainly because of the weather and mainly because of the ants, which is because of the weather. So I lost all of my tomatoes, I lost all of my potatoes, I lost my corn, I lost my beans, and I'm currently about to lose my sunflowers, except thankfully my sunflowers grew quick enough that the ants couldn't really truly destroy them. But it's been really, really bad and I've lost everything I grew. So it's super devastating. I almost didn't want to do a fall garden, but I'm going to be doing that as well. I have to get new soil and amend it and all that. But today we're going to harvest sunflowers and I will show you how to do that because I'm sure there's not 500 different types of YouTube videos showing you how. But you get another one, so let's go. I got my little garden helper. He just likes to sit there, huh, Soji? Yeah. Come on, let's go garden. In case you wanted to know what I'm talking about when I say an ant infestation, and it's not just like, you know, ants, <laughs> it's like way worse, let me give you an example. This is a leaf I pulled off of my sunflowers, and those, my friends, are all aphids and ants. Isn't that great? So awesome. There's my little helper, and there's a sunflower. Now, I have three of them. There's one, two, and the third one is actually hiding. And there it is, hiding under a leaf. Now, this one isn't quite ready yet. And the way you can tell that it's not quite ready yet is because it still has its yellow leaves. And also, the most important part, the top of it, this green part right here, isn't yellow yet. I do have one that's ready, and it's really funny because it's not um, very big compared to me. In fact, I'm actually taller than it. So this is a sunflower seed we're gonna harvest right here. And uh, I'm taller than it, it's kind of sad. But this one is ready, and you can tell because I kind of already brushed it off, but there's all the seeds. And it's brown, and it's yellow. Ooh and it's yellow everywhere. You might not be able to tell because it's so sunny. Welcome to California, you guys. I do have one really good sunflower that basically defeated all the other sunflowers. It is well over six feet. It's gotta be at least seven. It hasn't bloomed yet, and I think it's too tall for the ants to actually try and eat, so yay. Harvesting sunflowers is actually ridiculously easy when you're not holding a camera. But I'm holding a camera, so this is just gonna make it more interesting. Now there are several ways to do it. Some people will just cut it off right up above the head a few inches, and some people will do it about 12 inches down. Um, I'm going to do it somewhere in between because why not? Hey Soji, look at that. You are not helpful at all. So after, you're done, so after you're done harvesting your sunflower that is roughly the size of your head, you then go and let it dry for a week or so, supposedly, although they do say that sometimes they'll just kind of fall off and that means they're ready. Once they're dried up and you're all done harvesting, you're going to put them into a saltwater brine for I think it's over like overnight, like 12 hours or something. Uh, and then you can cook them, bake them, one of those two things, and you get sunflowers that you can eat. So, uh, I'm gonna take this probably ant-filled leaf thing and let it dry out and become food for me. And since we have time, because it's gonna take like a week, why don't we take a quick tour of the homestead? That's not a homestead, but I'm trying. Oh, the joys of living in Southern California where everything is a suburb. Right here, I have my poor, poor, poor little black currant bush and it was it's got buds it's still kind of living but this thing has been ravaged by ants just just destroyed and if i were to water the ground right now you would literally see all of this dirt just move up as all the ants come pouring out and it's really gross and no amount of of like ant poison has worked strawberries in pots they're doing super great two different kinds of mint 
rosemary, and I realized that this is a type of rosemary that, while nice, I actually wanted a different kind, and I have to go find it. This rhubarb is actually doing well, it's just kind of hot right now for it. But uh, I was told rhubarb couldn't grow in Southern California, to which I said, challenge accepted. And it has been growing for four years now and growing strong. This is a red currant bush. It's supposed to be a bush. It's just a twig trying to pretend that it's a bush. It's not going so well. I kind of don't know how to help it. Uh, if you have any suggestions on how to, uh, if you have any suggestions on how to grow red currants or gooseberry, which is hiding under this leaf here, there you go. Uh, that would be great because they're not growing well. Like they're alive but they're not really growing. So if you have any suggestions, that would be great. This is my hybrid apple tree. We have Granny Smith, Brayburn, Fuji, and Jonagold. I did talk to some gardeners and they said these will grow here in Southern California. So for those who said apples can't grow where it doesn't snow, that is not true. Over here in the shade, thank God, is a bunch of my crops that again did not do well we had extreme heat and i do mean extreme um 100 degree 108 104 106 for days and days and days in a row which is like just not good for plants and the ants decided you know what we're hungry and starving so let's just eat everything that that i own i do have a lot of concrete space so i ended up building a raised bed right there um and there was there was food in it. It's still, this is the dying part of the year. This was corn that never got to be corn, unfortunately, because the ants destroyed it. That was garlic that tried to be garlic. Dead potato, dead potato, dead potato, dead potato. And for some reason, one potato strand that has decided it was going to live. And I don't know how or why it was able to do it, but it survived the ant invasion barely this one right here was not only eaten but when i dug underneath uh, i found a bunch of white woolly aphids which the ants have brought with them in droves this is my heirloom raspberry plant as you can tell it's pretty healthy in places um but it is <laughs> my cat it's pretty healthy in places but it's getting a lot of dead leaf curl and I don't know why but yeah overall this has been a really bad year and kind of a bust for trying to grow stuff if you have any suggestions on urban gardening or how to garden on concrete which is pretty much all I have that would be great because I kind of don't know what to do I'm allowed to build raised beds I was thinking of building one or two more one specifically for herbs and then another kind of veggie garden um, but if you have any suggestions on what to grow or how to grow them on concrete in Southern California. That would be great. And yeah, so welcome to my halfway homestead. Hopefully I'll get a fall garden soon. I have to amend the soil and do all kinds of fun stuff and find someone with chickens to throw in some chicken manure because that's good for the soil. Thanks for joining me on the halfway homestead and hopefully I'll get the fall garden soon and we'll have fun doing that. Bye guys.